I'm Teresa Garcia. Today we will conclude our series which is addressed to those who are left behind after the rapture of the church. We will look at the future of the United States of America during the tribulation. This is my opinion based on George Washington's angelic visitation. Remember, God said in Amos 3, 7, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. We will look briefly at George Washington's vision, which is very controversial. Some in their controversy have missed the point. It is not whether the Lord discussed with George Washington that the North would beat the South in the Civil War, but rather answers this question. Did an angel discuss the destiny of America with George Washington, including the invasion of America by foreign troops? Unfortunately, I believe the answer to that question is Yes. Stay tuned. Welcome to Understanding the End of the Age with Teresa Garcia. The world has entered into a time of paradigm shift when everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Signs and wonders, miracles and healings attest to this truth. It is the time of the coming of the Lord. Join Teresa as we discuss how to prepare our hearts and loved ones in understanding the end of the age. Thanks for tuning in again this week, ladies and gentlemen. As we conclude our series, What'll I Do? I've Missed the Rapture. Heavenly Father, we pray again today for those who are left behind. We thank you that you are raising up great patriots in the United States uh, who are going to fight for America during this time and that America will ultimately be free forever. We give you the praise. God bless America. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this is not, strictly speaking, a teaching on George Washington's angelic visitation. We have a teaching on that in our series, America Belongs to God. I believe it's also on YouTube and other places on the net. But that is not primarily what we're going to talk about today. We're talking about the destiny of America. And so um, we're going to begin by understanding that three is the number of completion in divine affairs. Of course, we know there's three persons in the Trinity. We are a three-part being. And there are ultimately going to be three wars uh, by which the world will be judged before the um, millennium begins. World War I, World War II, and the future World War III. And so uh, we are going to be calling the World War III the Armageddon Campaign. Let's listen to a definition from Mike Bickle. People talk a lot about the Battle of Armageddon. That is not technically a biblical concept. Armageddon is a three-and-a-half-year campaign. Armageddon is an area in the north of Israel. It is a military staging area for many battles. The main battle, which people call the Battle of Armageddon, is really the Battle of Jerusalem. It is clear that the final battle is the Battle of Jerusalem. There are many passages about this. It will be the final battle of the Armageddon campaign. Now, the judgments on the world, World War I, II, and III, were not the three judgments on America. Uh, we actually won World War I and World War II, keeping the world safe for democracy. Uh, they weren't fought on American soil. And so uh, they were not the three great perils. But the Lord, the angel, did give to George Washington the three great perils for America. The third one is the same, the World War III. But let's take a, a look at the first and second great peril against America as told by the angel to George Washington and remember that God always sends mercy before judgment. The first great awakening preceded the first great peril and of course the, the famous evangelists were Jonathan Edwards and George Whitfield. 
The first great peril was the Revolutionary War. The second great awakening preceded the second great peril, the Civil War. More American lives were lost during the Civil War than any other war we have ever had. Then the third great awakening, which is happening right now, by the way, precedes the third great peril that we are calling the Armageddon campaign. Now remember, we're answering the question today, will America be invaded by foreign troops? So I'm going to give you a prophecy from Cindy Jacobs. She was speaking for a group of prophets that assembled in Colorado Springs in January 1999 to hear what God had to say about the new millennium. And uh, although she wrote it, most or all of the prophets who were there signed off on what she said. By witness of several prophetic voices, it is believed that an alliance will form between communism and Islam, creating an evil that is more difficult than anything we have previously known in modern history. Europe particularly needs to cry to the Lord. If Europeans cry out with all their heart, God will hear them in their day of trouble. And so... You know, you might say, why Europe? Well, it goes back to Daniel chapter 2 and the image with the feet of iron and clay, which happened to be the revived Roman Empire. Let's use a, um, uh, put something on the screen, a chart that we've used before to help explain. During the first half of the tribulation, various kings rule from the revived Roman Empire. The religious center is Rome. The economic center is Brussels, Belgium. Then midway through the tribulation, everything shifts to the east. The Antichrist rules the world with the ten kings. Jerusalem is the religious center of the world. Babylon is the economic center of the world. Now we're going to look at a second prophecy from Mike Bickle. Remember, we're talking about an alliance of Islam and communism. And by the way, there's one out there already. Have you noticed Russia and Iran? Let's listen now. Mike Bickle says, There will be a resurgence, a new kingdom that will rise up out of the ashes. It will have the spirit of communism. It will be mingled in with the spirit of Islam. It will be rooted in Europe. It will be horrendously evil and the whole earth will shake under its terror. But God will raise up a church in Europe and raise up a church all over the earth, which will be able to withstand its terror in the authority and victory of Jesus. Many will be martyred, but multitudes will stand in full love, and they will escape it by the protection of the Lord. Beloved, there is a war coming, and I'm going to end with this. I believe the political sovereignty of the United States will be temporarily interrupted. I believe there will be cities of refuge. I believe, and this is the point we're making today, America will be temporarily occupied by foreign forces. The Bible indicates in several places that this future struggle is going to be worldwide. Let's listen to what the angel said to Daniel in chapter 7. Thus he, an angel, said to Daniel, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it in pieces. And so the words the whole earth there imply that America, which will still be a great power, but not the greatest power, uh, will be affected. Now this invites the question, what is going to happen to America? And we get a partial answer to that in George Washington's angelic visitation. Uh, Many people disregard this visit And one of the primary reasons is because of Snopes. If you know what Snopes is, Snopes is an internet fact-check website. 
And so the Snope says that this vision is fiction. Let's listen to some information about Snopes. Snopes founder David Mickelson told WorldNet Daily in an interview that Snopes is only as reliable as the sources it uses. Snope use, Snopes uses as its primary source in debunking George Washington's angelic visitation the American Society for Psychical Research. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't get any advice from psychics. This uh, institute was not even founded until 1885. Why would we consider them experts on something that happened in 1859, which is when the story was published? Supposedly, this vision was written to stoke patriotism in the North for the oncoming Civil War. However, when you read it, you realize that the total words discussing the Civil War are 99, whereas the total words discussing the End Time War are 433. Therefore, since there's four times as much information about the end time war as there is about the civil war, I tend to think it was written to de discuss the end time war. Now, let me say one more thing about Snopes. I would urge you to go to Snopes, if you have an internet, and ask them this question. Was George Washington a dedicated Christian? And when you read their answer, you will see the lens through which they see the world. So I'm going to read from an essay that I wrote in 2009 about George Washington's visitation. In general, many Christians accept this vision as genuine, but secularists do not. For example, Snopes, an internet fact check site, does not give it credibility. The chief complaint offered by critics of the vision is the whereabouts of Anthony Sherman in 1777. It was to Sherman that General Washington related the vision. Sherman later recounted it for a journalist, Wesley Bradshaw. Sherman told Bradshaw he was at Valley Forge in 1777. Records indicate Sherman was at Saratoga, in 1777 and didn't join Washington until 1778. However, is it not possible that Sherman was sent as an emissary to Washington at some point during the winter in question, 1777? Shortly before his death in the 1850s, Sherman gave the story to journalist Bradshaw. Bradshaw first published it in 1859. Therein lies one of the major proofs of its authenticity. The vision records that the South would not successfully secede from the Union, yet Bradshaw published it two years before the Civil War even began. In other words, how would he know that the North would win? Everybody agrees the South had better generals. Furthermore, in the early years of the war, the South was winning. Lincoln himself said later that he did not believe God would have blessed the North to win if he had not signed the Emancipation Proclamation. So now let's listen to George Washington discussing a future war, uh, which we're calling the Armageddon Campaign, or the Third World War. The dark shadowy angel blew three distinct blasts, and taking water from the ocean, he sprinkled it upon Europe, Asia, and Africa. Then my eyes beheld a fearful scene. From each of these countries arose thick black clouds that were joined into one. And through this mass there gleamed a dark red light by which I saw hordes of armed men who were moving with the cloud, marched by land and sailed by sea to America, which country was enveloped in the volume of the cloud. And I dimly saw these vast armies devastate. My ears listened to the thundering of the cannon, clashing of swords, and the shouts and cries of millions in mortal combat. Now, this paragraph deserves future scrutiny. Uh, 
First of all, the invading forces come from Europe, Asia, and Africa, and yet they marched by land as well as by sea. So how do you march by land from Europe, Asia, and Africa? The answer seems to be that they will come up through our porous southern border. Furthermore, he saw millions in mortal combat. Now, the total number of deaths in the Civil War, both sides together, was about 55,000. So for Washington to see millions in mortal combat, uh, that is saying a lot. In other words, it's not something a fiction writer would likely think up. And by the way, there were no weapons available to kill millions in mortal combat in those days. I don't. I think the Gatlin gun was during or right after the Civil War, and so actually it is looking forward to a time when there is nuclear uh, armaments. There are nuclear armaments. Now, I personally first heard of this vision from Mike Bickle, and I can tell you that the prophets in Kansas City do believe it is legitimate. Furthermore, Mike Bickle had his own vision of enemy tanks coming, hundreds of them, over, unfortunately, Arizona. In his book, Warnings from Heaven, Louis Nicolosi uh, saw an invasion of America. He said he saw the United States invaded by Russia and the Arab nations on the East Coast, and China on the West Coast. He said there were ships entering our eastern ports, and he saw New York City that the invasion was deceptive like Pearl Harbor. Likewise, Dr. Oral Roberts saw some kind of crisis in New York City. This was, he saw a vision in July of 2004, if you remember. He said... Then I saw with my eyes something I'd never seen suddenly in the clouds in the skies above New York City and the east part of the United States, and which hung there for quite some time and then spread out across America without touching the ground. And then God diffused it away from America and sent it out to the nations of the earth. I saw something coming down from above, smoke and vapor and blood, and so this is, again, something, um, something pretty devastating sounding. Now, we know, again, from Revelation 3, verse 10, we're not going to be here, but uh, the Lord Jesus does tell of a worldwide calamity to those who are left behind. He's speaking to us, the raptured church. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. They will be tested. And if you are left behind and you're watching this show during the tribulation, or if you're watching me during the church age, please bow your head and pray with me right now. Don't wait any longer. Invite Jesus to come into your heart to take over your life and you will be secure. Bow your head and pray and say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me and cleanse me. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you're coming back again. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and power. I'm saved. I'm born again. And I'm on my way to heaven because Jesus now lives in my heart. If you just prayed with me, I would encourage you you can call me, you can call somebody else, tell them, I just prayed with that lady, I'm a Christian now. Now, you say, is this just a one-time deal? No, it's a way of life. So how do we walk this out? Let me give you a few suggestions. One, find a good church where the Bible is believed and the Holy Spirit is honored. And I think you should go at least once a week in these end times. Two, pray every day to the Father in the name of Jesus 
He will answer your secret prayers. Three, get a Bible you understand and read it every day. On this show, we use the New King James Version. And finally, if you have never been baptized since you gave your life to Jesus, plan to be water baptized to seal your commitment to the Lord. Now, George Washington's vision also says that America cannot win this end-time war without these legion of white spirits that come out of the heavens and help us. But remember, the Jews can't win their war either unless Jesus comes back in a white, on a white horse with the armies of heaven. And so is George Washington's vision fact or fiction? Let's consider these facts. One, it predicted the South would not successfully secede from the Union in 1859, something no one would know for six more years. Two, it artfully connects the destiny of America with Israel, showing an intimate knowledge of Jeremiah 31. It was written by Wesley Bradshaw when he was only 23. It prophesied that hordes of enemy combatants would enter America by land. In other words, it foresaw our poorest border. It foresaw weapons of mass destruction no one could have imagined in 1859, and it saw that America could not win the war called the Third Great Peril without supernatural assistance. In Jeremiah 31, 35, the prophet discusses the ordinances of the moon and the stars they give light at night. Then he says, If those ordinances depart from before me, says the Lord, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. Well, it says in George Washington's vision something similar about America. Let's look at some similarities. Israel was founded to take the Torah to the nations. America was founded to take the news of Jesus to the nations. Israel was comprised of 13 tribes. America, 13 colonies. In Israel, the north, the 10 tribes, sometimes was at war with the south. In America, the north fought the south in the Civil War. In Israel, the capital was Jerusalem, not part of any tribe. In America, the capital, Washington, not part of any state. Israel was led by three groups, the king, the priest, and the prophet. America was led by three groups, the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. Israel, the Jews left Egypt to escape religious persecution. America, the pilgrims left England to escape religious persecution. Israel is called Satan by some Islamicists. America is called the Great Satan by some Islamicists. Israel was the first republic founded on the fixed laws of God. America was the second republic founded on the fixed laws of God. Israel, all who would heave it away, will surely be cut to pieces. America, the most fearful peril, the third, passing which the world united shall not prevail against her, according to the angel to George Washington at Valley Forge. Israel, as long as the stars remain, Israel will endure. And to America, as long as the stars remain, America will endure. This is according to the angel to George Washington at Valley Forge. Therefore, I believe that America, like Israel, will last forever. As I said, this is only my point of view. We will be right back. It's time to proclaim America belongs to God. In this 12-part DVD series, Teresa discusses the Mayflower Compact, America's original covenant with God, our first Thanksgiving Day, our founding documents in the 1700s, and the history and future of America. Included in the package, America Belongs to God, are copies of George Washington's Angelic Visitation and Teresa's essay defending that vision. Send $49 to receive the 12-part DVD series, America Belongs to God. The book's America 
America's Providential History by Belials and McDowell, Backfired by Bill Federer, and The Role of Pastors and Christians in Civil Government by David Barton. Also included are many of the charts, graphs, and timelines used on the screen, George Washington's Angelic Visitation, and Teresa's Essay. Send $49 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236 or call 618-281-3291. We take Visa and MasterCard at 618-281-3291 or order online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. If you would also like a copy of Teresa's book, From the Hidden, you will understand it perfectly. For only $10, $4 off the regular price, send $59 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236, or call 618-281-3291, or order online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. And thank you for including your tax-deductible donation when you order. Teresa's six-part DVD series, What'll I Do? I've Missed the Rapture, is now available for purchase. Teresa gives a detailed account of the seven-year tribulation based on Revelation chapters 6 through 16. She contrasts the burning of Rome midway through the tribulation with the burning of literal Babylon at the end of the tribulation. She also discusses America's role in the tribulation according to George Washington. Also included with this series is the Thanksgiving show entitled Thankful to God and Our Forefathers. She begins this show with a religious persecution of the pilgrims in northern England, their flight to Holland, and ultimately their historic crossing to the New World on the Mayflower. To order this series, What'll I Do? I've Missed the Rapture, including the Thanksgiving special, plus the notebook with copies of charts used on the screen, and the pamphlet, Honor the Blood, send $29 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236, or call 618-281-3291, or order online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. To include a copy of Kirk Cameron's riveting DVD, Monumental, a detailed account of the founding of America for only $10 more, send $39 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236, or call 618-281-3291, or order online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. This concludes our series, What'll I Do? I've Missed the Rapture. It is my prayer that all of you who have heard it have given your life to Jesus. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. God bless America. And we will see you again next week. Thank you for watching Understanding the End of the Age with Teresa Garcia. You may contact us at Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236, or call 618 618- 281-3291 or visit us online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com You may also find us on Facebook at Teresa Garcia Ministry For prayer requests, call 618-281-3291 or mail them to Teresa Garcia P.O. Box 494 Columbia, Illinois 62236 Be sure to join us again next week for another edition of Understanding the End of the Age with Teresa Garcia